everybody, I'm Tony Pellegrino, and this is an abbreviated version of our terminology series that we've been doing over a number of parts. And uh, this is a great series for anybody, even somebody with experience to watch. I think you'll find it very informative. We're gonna cover a lot of terminology. So if anybody's been talking over your head or saying terms that you don't understand, we're gonna clarify all that, and by the end of this, you too can be an expert when it comes to talking about Jeeps. All right, we left off at uh, scrub radius the last time we talked. So to further along from scrub radius, we're gonna talk about axle width. So it's important that you understand that the axle that came on your Jeep with the little tires was much more narrow than what you'd install as an aftermarket axle because you're going to have a lot more articulation. The stock suspension only has about three or four inches of wheel travel, and your new suspension will have 14 inches of wheel travel. So to do that, you have to have a much bigger range where things are a little bit further out, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that right now. So back on a CJ, you know, you can see that it was 55 inches wide, with the total vehicle width, now when we say total width, that's bubble to bubble on the tire. So, um, you know, from the passenger side to the driver's side, the total width of the vehicle. And uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because your average trailer is only 82 inches wide. So if you ever feel like trailering it, you, this is part of your consideration, okay? So, so on and so forth. YJ, 60 and a half, TJ, 60 and a half, LJ, 60 and a half, JK, 65, look, they went a lot wider because they started to figure out that what they needed was more backspace to reduce the scrub radius, the subject that we were just talking about in the previous terminology series. JL, they even went a little wider. Okay, now they're at 68. JT, same 68. What does Genrite do? 70, okay? We figured out that it's 70 inches with 14 inches of travel you can clear a 42 on whatever you have. So 70 is the magic number. Now, we mentioned WMS. You're gonna hear us refer to this term quite often. I'm gonna get into that in just a second. And we end up at a total width on the, the wheels, right? The bubble of the tires at 85 inches. Okay, now that's with a 1350 wide 40 inch tall tire. So um, again, this is just for reference. So this is what WMS is. It's wheel mounting surface. It's that surface that when you shove the wheel on and bolt it down, it's that's the surface that determines how wide your vehicle is. And likewise, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the back of the wheel. So it's that machined surface that when you put the tire and wheel on, that's gonna meet up with that disc brake rotor and uh, that is your WMS. Also, this is where you check. So it's from here to that edge on the back would be where you check your back spacing. Okay, so also another important, we're always talking about back space. That's how you check it. You lay something flat across the wheel, only the wheel, the tire, the bubble of the tire doesn't count. You're only talking the wheel and then you measure straight down and that's how you check your back space, okay? So here we are, we just took a, like a standard YJ, mostly stock, and uh, measured it. So that's, remember when I said the bubble of the tire, that's what we're measuring. So the total outside of the vehicle, okay? Which is different than the body width, much different and different than the width of the wheels. So this is the overall width. And uh, here, here's an example of you know, between the two wheel wells on a trailer, um, the normal width is 82 inches. Okay, so if you ever plan to trailer your Jeep or if you pet plan to build a Genrite Jeep, you've got to either have drive over fenders or get a much wider trailer. Okay, just, just want you to be prepared. All right, so here's a great example. We, we've talked about the back space in great detail. This is the limiting factor. Right, so here's the, the knuckle, and you can see that it's very close to the rim right here. And also this bolt up top 
um, that's also very close to the rim. So those are your two limiting factors that, that don't allow you to go any deeper. Now this is a 17 inch wheel. So if you went with a 20 inch wheel, then you could pass over the top of both of those. Okay, so depending, but a 20 inch wheel is, you know, now you're talking about a 42 inch tire. So um, you just gotta make sure that you're staying within the realms of what you're doing. Okay. All right, <clears throat> the next topic that I wanna cover is Here's a standard ball joint style and a kingpin style. You can see that the C on the axle side looks quite different and uh, the way that they mount is quite different. So what we did, this picture is a little bit confusing because we've got the C here and the knuckle for that is way over here where this one, the knuckle is already mounted to the C. But we just wanted to cover ball joint versus kingpin. This is a very top popular topic online. It's always debated and um, I've always chosen to go with the ball joint style because I like how wide the C is and how thick the C is. You can see it's quite a bit different and much more narrow um, on the kingpin. And I have one here um, that I'm going to stand up. You can see that this is not a small part and um, this shows you the two ball joints. The, the lower one is always bigger than the top one and just shows you this style, and uh, it is quite hardy and large. So um, we're gonna go on here. All right, this next slide shows you the ball joint that I just showed you in the knuckle. This is what it looks like. So it's a solid steel piece with a ball on the end of it, hence the word ball joint, that is captured in a two-piece cap that then presses into the knuckle, and this is this red thing is a little bit of a seal on there. Um, sometimes they're red, sometimes they're black, but this gives you an idea of what the ball joint looks like, how it's made, okay? It's, it's uh, good quality, they're made to last a long time and survive through a lot of elements. Here's what the kingpin looks like, a completely different animal, and um, this is machined out of a high strength steel, and then around that goes all these pieces. So over that uh, piece would slide on one of these, uh, which is uh, like a plastic Delrin material. And then this nut would go on top of that. And then the whole thing's held down with a spring. So um, this is a typical, you know, kingpin style uh, rebuild kit that you get from Dana Spicer. And I, I recommend getting a nice quality one um, so that you don't have to rebuild it very often. All right, the next thing, so this is regardless of whether you have a kingpin or a ball joint style front end, you want positive caster. When you got your Jeep from the factory, assuming you, you got it when it was stock, you would have had six degrees of caster. Now caster is what, when you make a corner, and then you go to let go of the wheel and the vehicle goes straight again, that's what caster is. It helps the vehicle to stay in a nice line going down the road and um, you want caster. As soon as you start to get away from that, it's just like a shopping cart that, that the, the wheels start doing this number. So what, what happens is, is it's very simple. So here's, here's one of your lower control arms, right? So from stock, the control arms are flat. So as you lift the vehicle, the, the control arm drops down. As the control arm drops down, you get to here. So now, not only have you lifted the vehicle, you've put on bigger tires and wheels, now you have no caster and your Jeep is hunting all over the road. Okay, so, so not only do I want to explain the term, but I want to give you some context as to when you don't have the right amount of caster what it's going to do so if your jeep is a white knuckler and you're constantly fighting it it's going to be caster toe in toe out which we've already covered um and uh one more thing i'm drawing a blank now um let's stop for a sec um what was the other term it's caster toe in toe out and no, um, dang it, 
No, the, yeah. Um, oh, bump steer. <clears throat> okay, so the other thing that it could be is bump steer, which we've also covered in a previous episode. So if your track bar and drag link are not the correct length and in line, every time you go over a bump, you're gonna be chasing that thing. So, so you've gotta have those three things correct and uh, that's what's going to allow your Jeep to drive nice down the road, just like it did when it was stock. So um, focus on getting positive caster. Remember, six degrees with stock. When we build a Jeep with a custom axle, we add 10 degrees. Okay, so we're really kicking it up. And by the way, 10 degrees is how much every BMW, Porsche, Mercedes Benz, when you turn those wheels, that, that it actually makes them lean into the corner. And I'll show you right here, so you can see how the tire not only is turning, but it's leaning. So it's actually riding on, on this case, the outside of the tread, on this case, the inside of the tread. So when that happens, it's, it's like riding a motorcycle, you know, you'd lean into the corner. The, all of this helps it turn, and that's part of the reason we add a lot of caster, okay? So, Again, this would be the same way a Mercedes. Next time you're around one of those, you know, Mercedes, BMW, or Porsche, watch somebody pulling out of the parking lot and you're gonna see those tires leaning over as they turn. It makes a huge difference in the handling characteristics of the vehicle on and off-road, okay? All right, so here's a quick way to check. If you stick your head inside the fender well on your Jeep and look straight down at the ball joints, you can see here's the, the lower part of the C. Now you can't see the other ball joint because the axle shaft is in the way, but you could tell it would be right about here, right? So this tells you you have a positive amount of caster. This, this is about five or six degrees of caster right there. Now, if it's leaned further back where you can see the entire ball joint, that's how we set them up and that's 10 degrees, okay? So this is just a simple check. If your vehicle is really squirrely and you look underneath and you can't see the other one, you got no caster and that's why it's squirrely. All right, so here's one of ours. Um, again, this is from the other side, but you could see that you could clearly see the bottom uh, ball joint in this scenario because we've got that laid back, okay? All right, that's the end of this episode on terminology. Um, hopefully this is very helpful to you and we're uh, explaining and dispelling all of the contradictory things you've heard. All of these things are very important on your Jeep and uh, if you're able to apply them all, it's gonna make a huge difference in the way your Jeep handles.